to show you the history of 200 countries during 200 years in less than one minute. I have an axis for income. I have an axis for lifespan. I start in 1800 and there are all the countries. And back in 1800, everyone was down in the poor and sick corner. Can you see? Low lifespan, little money. And here comes the effect of the Industrial Revolution. Of course, the countries in West Europe, they are coming to better wealth, but they are not getting much healthier in the beginning. And those under colonial domination doesn't benefit anything in there. They remain there in the sick and poor corner. And now health is improving, health is slowly improving here. It's getting up here, and we are coming into the new century and the terrible First World War. And then the economic recession after that. And then the Second World War. Ooh, and now, independence. And with independence, health is improving faster than it ever did in other countries here. And now starts the fast economic catch-up of China and other Latin American countries. They come on here, you know, and India is following there, and the African countries is also following. It's an amazing change that has happened in the world. You know, in the front here, we have now US and UK, but they're not moving so fast any longer. The fast movers are here in the middle. China is moving very fast to catch up. And Bangladesh, look, Bangladesh is already here, now quite healthy, and now starting with fast economic growth. And Mozambique, yes, Mozambique is back there, but they are now moving fast in the right direction. But all this I show you is country averages. What about people? Have people also got a better life? I'm now going to show you something which makes me very excited as a statistician. I'm going to show you income distribution, the difference between people. Uh, and to do that, I take the bubbles back 50 years, and then we are going to look only at money. And to do that, we have to expand and adjust the axis because the richest is so rich and the poorest is so poor. So this will be a bigger difference than between the countries. And what we do now is that we let the country fall down here, this is United States, and spread to show the range within the country. And I take down all the countries in the Americas. And now you can see from the richest person to the poorest person. And the height here shows you how many there are on each income level. And now let's take down Europe. And on top of that, I'm going to put Africa. And finally, the region with most people on top of everything, Asia. Now, in 1963, the world was constituted by two humps. First, the richest hump. It's like a camel, isn't it? The first hump here with the richest is mainly Europe and the Americas. And the poorest hump over here is mainly Asia and Africa. And the poverty line was there. Can you see? how many people there were in extreme poverty 50 years ago. And most of them were in Asia, and people were saying, Asia will never get out of poverty, except that some people are still saying about Africa today. Now, what has happened? I start the world, and you can see that many people are born into poverty here, but Asia goes towards higher income, and one billion goes out of extreme poverty this way, and the whole shape of the world changed, and the camel is dead. It's reborn as a dromedary. <laughs> and what you can see here, you know, is the variation from the richest, that is most people in the middle. And there's a much smaller proportion of the world now in extreme poverty. But be careful, it's still a lot of people, more than one billion people in extreme poverty. Now the question is, can this move out of extreme poverty now continue for those in Africa and even for the new billions in Africa? I think it's possible, even probable, that most countries in Africa will rise out of poverty too. It will need wise action and huge investment, but it can happen. 